We're continuing our study of the I am statements of Jesus, uh, found primarily in the book of John. There's seven of them. And uh, we're enjoying that because these, these statements that Jesus himself made uh, pointed to who he is, the very essence of his nature. Uh, as you recall, I am is a statement given all the way back in the book of Exodus uh, concerning, the nat- concerning God himself. It's the identification of God. And so when Jesus spoke these I am statements, he was identifying himself as God. But each of the statements gives us another nuance about the nature of and the person and the works of Jesus himself. Now, we're working now in chapter 10, in verses 11 to 18, in one of the most uh, beautiful of these statements where he says, I am, verse 11, the good shepherd. Now we saw last, last time that he was the door uh, for the sheep. And so there is this very quick uh, follow-up of that particular picture. And so I am the door, the protector of the sheep as he brought them into the sheepfold and lay, lay across that door as a protector. But now he moves a little further and even a more uh, beautiful, I think, picture of the nature of our Lord when he says, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, as we begin to look at this particular statement, uh, we find a number of things that he says. I, I want to read more of the text, <clears throat> but notice the cadence. Notice that he repeats something uh, four times saying virtually the same thing. And so this is the, uh, the essence of what it means to be the good shepherd as far as Jesus is concerned. So let's follow along and look at verse 12. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, uh, who is not of the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming. He leaves the sheep and he flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and he's not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. So he says that again. And I know my own, and my own know me. So we see that that part of what he does here is he knows his sheep. And the sheep would know who the good shepherd is. Verse um, 15, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. So there is that knowledge, that that, uh, intimate relationship between the Father and the Son. But you notice that phrase, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Now, he probably there is speaking of the the Gentiles, who he would, uh, because he's speaking directly to Jewish people here. He had come to his own, his own Jewish people, but he also has those outside of the, the nation of Israel that would be his, and he's going to bring them into the one flock. And then he says in verse 17, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life for the sh- so that I may take it again. So here's the third time. The, the, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And the Father loves him, he says, because of this. So this love that within the Godhead is predicated upon the desire of the Father to send his Son for the sheep and the willingness of the Son to lay down his life for the sheep. That is the connecting uh, the uh, means by which this love is demonstrated. And then he says in verse 18, no one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it again. This commandment I receive from my father. So once again, in verse 18, for the fourth time, he says he lays down his life for the sheep. And he says here, I lay it down on my own initiative. So the, though the father has sent the son, John 3:16. Uh, he didn't come without a, a willingness to do so. It was ever bit as much the will of the Son as it was of the will of the Father for him to come and die for you and I. And that's all part of the, uh, the Godhead. There's no division of wills and desires within the Godhead or we'd, or we'd have more than one God. And so he, he came, though, to lay down his life. And he not only has the authority to lay it down, he has the authority to take it again. And he spoke of that earlier in one of the earlier verses. In other words, not only did he lay down his life for the sheep, but he resurrected from the dead, and he has the power to do that. And so our our good shepherd, the one and only Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, has come to do many things for us. But this text is very clear that his main purpose was to come to lay down his life for you and I and to raise it up again. In that, the Father and the Son are in perfect harmony. The Father has sent the Son The Son of His own initiative has come to lay down His life for you and I. He is 
the Good Shepherd, what a joy that should bring to the lives of each of us.